Hi guys, welcome back to the Curl Factory. It's Raquel. Today is part two of the Curly Girl Handbook. So you watched my video last week on part one and I'm gonna pick up right where I stopped from the previous video on part two of this book. But before we get into that, you know what to do. Join the Curl Factory family, follow me on social media, as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get into it and we ended off the first video on the four styling methods. Now there was something that I forgot to mention and it was only afterwards when I was editing the video and I was looking at the book that I kind of picked something up that made it a little bit, you know, even more confusing for me because this particular chapter that we were talking about, which was chapter four, the heading four chapter four, the Curly Girl Method creating a daily routine and I was like daily routine wouldn't this be very confusing for someone who's new because daily means every single day but because I'm on my journey I know that I have a wash day routine which is something that I do every week but let's go back to the four steps again now on page 36 and 37 it actually says the basics for all curl types and it says it's cleansing, it's conditioning, it's scrunching and styling. And now I'm going to talk about these four steps and what it says in the book about my hair type and how I would use the, these four steps in my curly girl method. So the four types were in chapter four and chapter five basically covers, you know, the four steps for the other curl types and my curl type only starts on chapter six. So because this is kind of my experience and my thoughts, I am going to focus just on, you know, the four steps for my type of hair. And as I said, it starts in chapter six and the heading is multicultural hair and this is what it looks like. So chapter six doesn't go straight into what I want, but there is, you know, another stylist who does have, you know, type four, type three hair that's sharing her story and her curl confessions, which I did find very, very interesting. But then on page 64, I started getting the information that I really, really wanted. And on page 64, it says, keeping hair in optimum condition during the growing out phase is paramount because you want new growth to be healthy. And this is so important. You want your new growth to be healthy because if you have any damaged hair that's where the transitioning process comes out so you want to make sure that if you're starting your journey you're really taking care of the new growth the paragraph then continues to say coconut oil shea butter jojoba oil and tl curls are all key moisturizers to use during this phase and in the future to keep your hair hydrated um i don't really agree with this and I could be like so wrong because for me oils don't moisturize my hair they're usually used as a sealant of some type and as I'm going on my method I'm finding that I'm using almost no oils on my hair but again this is my personal journey and things things that I am you know trying out now we get some meat to this book right here because in this particular chapter it says at first you need to use a sulfate free cleanser or botanical conditioner several times a week to really release all the waxy product for your hair now i think it depends on your your hair for me personally i would use a sulfate free or botanical conditioner still once a week because for me i would find it to be very stripping i understand the logic from the book really saying that get all of you know the bad stuff all of the wax out of your hair as quickly as you can because remember if you're using silicones if you're using sulfate shampoos if you're starting your journey you're jumping right into your journey your hair still has all that bad stuff that needs to come out of it in order for the new products to really get into your hair and start working and for you to see results and that's the reason why i personally think if you just start your your, your natural hair journey or you start the curly girl method after two weeks people are complaining why don't i see results it's because you still need to get all of that gunk out of your hair i'm gonna go back to the book and it says i also recommend and when it's i it's actually you know the authors of the book i also recommend that you condition your hair nightly as needed now this is something i've never really shared on my channel 
when I started my journey and I was transitioning, my hair was very dry and I did a lot of research on how to moisturize my hair. I tried the baggy method um, and there were other, other stuff that I can't really remember like on the spot, but I did try, you know, ways to moisturize my hair and, and keep it hydrated. So I understand when she says, you know, like condition your hair nightly, but as needed, because if your hair is dry, add that conditioner, add that moisture to your hair as needed. It then goes on to say also leaving some, maybe all of the conditioner in your hair when you shower can also be a good styling foundation. It goes on to say if you have flyaways, put some gel in your hands and glide it over the wet hair. Glide it over the wet hair and it says the next day your hair will probably still look great and the bathroom steel steam will reactivate your curl product from the day before. I like these tips. It tells you about putting conditioner in your hair daily or nightly to help condition. Leave the conditioner in as a nice, you know, base to start styling. If you have flyaways, don't stress, take some gel, put it in your hand, just glide it on while you're in the shower. Also, the steam in the shower or the bath helps to reactivate the product. Don't stress so much, guys. Don't force that perfect curl. Don't force the perfect tea, but just take it step by step. Now on page 65 in the book, this is where I am and this is like all the highlighted parts that I have that I'm going to go over with you guys. And the heading says a daily routine for fractal and zigzag curls. It says cleansing, conditioning and styling time. That's very important. I'm somebody who doesn't want to take a lot of time on my hair, especially daily. So it says 10 to 15 minutes. This time will decrease when hydration has become your hair's way of life. I kind of like that when hydration becomes your hair's way of life when your hair is hydrated you really see a massive difference in your hair and it does make it a lot easier and a whole lot more manageable let's continue it says fractal and zigzag curls are the tiniest driest and densest of any hair type because of their non-porous nature a lot of products don't penetrate the hair shaft which is why you may have tried unsuccessfully to hydrate your hair in the past so so interesting and i hope you guys really grab that point there it goes on to say you know by now that sulfate full products are bad for curls and for fractal and zigzags they are a disaster just one dose of shampoo takes gallons of water to rinse and it never comes out completely and hence we keep stressing use sulfate free or botanical conditioner because using something with sulfates it's really going to take a long time to get out of your hair for these curl types to absorb maximum moisture, they need to be hydrated before you get into the shower. A pre-cleanse acts as a wetting agent for these hard to saturate fractal and zigzags, making the conditioning process more effective. This method is also great for cleansing, dreadlocks, weaves and extensions. Now I'm on page 66 of the book and there's this little box here that kind of got my attention and I'm going to read it for you guys. Um, the heading says coloring multicultural curls. This is coloring. Um, and this is the first time they mention deep conditioning in the book and it's in that little section. It says, though you can color your curly hair, I use a lightener on mine and this is the author. You have to be careful. Hair color chemicals can dehydrate your already parched curl, which is something that we know. Just make sure you're conditioning and deep conditioning on a regular basis in order to put back the moisture that's depleted when hair coloring products are used. And remember, no shampoo ever. Guys, that was the first time in the book that I saw the word deep conditioner and it was in relation to hair color. I do have color on my hair and deep conditioning really is my thing. Now the book really starts with the four steps. So now I'm going to start talking about the cleansing and conditioning process. What I really like is that there are pictures for every single step. So you can see what, you know, each step is talking about and you can actually, you know, relate to each picture. So step number one for my type of hair is before getting in the shower, pour a shallow palmful of sulfate free cleanser or botanical conditioner in one hand. Then rub your hands together. If you're not sure whether to use a cleanser or conditioner, go with the lather because it's more hydrating. So, so interesting. It then says smooth the cleanser or conditioner over the entire surface of the hair's canopy 
using the backward motion. So you should be using a backward motion. This pre-cleanse acts as a wetting agent to make the cleansing and conditioning process more effective. It saves on water too. So what this step is basically saying before you get into the shower, put some um, botanical conditioner or your shampoo in your hand and just start putting it on your hair in a backward motion. Step number two, it says, turn on the shower and stand under the water stream to wet your hair thoroughly so you're just standing under there and getting your hair wet no touching yet step number three says cup one hand apply a sulfate free cleanse or botanical conditioner along your fingertips and distribute to the fingertips of the other hand starting at the temples place your fingertips on your scalp and and use a firm circular massaging motion to gently to rub gently down the sides of your head move to the top of the head massaging gently towards the crown then move to the back of the head ending at the nape so it's saying that you must add some more um botanical conditioner or some sulfate free shampoo put it on your fingertips add it on start here backward motion move up to the crown and then end at the back of your neck or at the nape of your neck the fourth step is just to rinse your hair thoroughly. Make sure all of the botanical conditioner or the sulfate free shampoo is completely out of your hair. The fifth step, according to the book I'm still reading, guys, is it says take a generous palm full of botanical conditioner and apply it throughout the landscape of your hair so no curl is left behind. It also says again, err uh, on the side of more rather than less for this type of hair. So go, so go in with conditioner, guys. Your hair should have as much viscosity as jellyfish in water. So you really gotta, you know, get your hair nice and squishy. Cleanse or shave another part of the body while you let the conditioner soak into your curl. So leave it in for a while, guys. Step number six is gently comb your fingertips through your hair from underneath. So while you have the conditioner in, start combing it through from underneath, removing knots and loose hairs that have naturally gathered. Don't worry if hair comes out. It's normal to lose about 100 hairs a day. Continue to comb conditioner through the hairs terrain. Now for me personally, this is not gonna work on my type of hair. I really need to section my hair. I start from the, the bottom, you know, from my ends and I work my way up to really detangle my hair. Um, if I have to do that, nothing's really gonna happen for my hair. But again, this is my experience. I know my hair and I'm just sharing it in relation to this box. Step number seven says do not rinse out the conditioner or at the most splash a handful or two of water on the surface of the hair to help disperse the conditioner through the landscape of the hair and turn off the water. But stay in the shower. Tilt your head to one side and use your hands to squeeze quench your hair up towards the scalp so a milky residue seeps through your fingers. Because of the density and dryness of the skull type, the hair may not drip at all so what it's saying here is leave the condition in your hair add a little bit more water to kind of just get your hair nice and wet then take your hands and kind of scrunch your hair upwards until you hear that squish 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 that is created from the water as well as the conditioner to really type try and you know get that moisture in we're almost done guys because now I'm on page 68 and I'm moving on to the styling. So I spoke about washing and then I spoke about conditioning and then I spoke about the scrunching. And just to go back to the scrunching, um, as I read, you know, it says tilt your hair to the side. So do it kind of like, you know, on both sides. Now let's talk about styling. In the styling process, according to the book, there are six steps. And the first step is, after you step out of the shower, let the conditioner seep in for two or three minutes as you dry the rest of your body. Step number two says, if you are not looking for more height or width, do not tilt your head forward. Now, I personally don't tilt my head forward. It means, you know, like, you know, because it gives me a lot of volume, something that on most days I'm really not looking for. So if you're somebody like me, don't tilt your head forward. It says instead, look up to the ceiling and sway your head back and forth to allow it to fall into its natural place. Then it says, take a generous palmful of gel and rub it into both hands, tilt your head to the right and evenly distribute into the hair as you scrunch, squeeze, 
hair gently up towards the scalp, tilt the head to the left and do the same scrunch squeeze motion. Now, nowhere has it mentioned drying your hair, so your hair should still be very wet straight out of the shower. Step number three then says, rub another shallow palmful of gel between your hands and lightly graze it downward over the entire canopy of the hair. Factal and zigzag curls can soak in all the moisturizing product that you give them. Step number four says, if you do not want hair to have more height or width, at step two, tilt your head over and apply gel in both hands as you scrunch and squeeze hair gently up towards the scalp, then scrunch gel throughout the canopy of the hair. Again, I'm a little bit confused because earlier it says, if you don't really want height and width, don't tilt your hair over. But I guess in this particular way, instead of doing it this way and this way, tilt your hair, your hair over and do the scrunching that way. Now we're on to step number five. It says with your head still tilted over, place your hands lightly on your scalp and use your fingers to gently shuffle your hair at the roots, which will give it some lift. With your hands still on your scalp, stand upright and lift your hands off your head without dragging your fingers through your hair. <coughs> if you want more lift, place clips at the roots. Now, what they're basically saying is, Take, it, take your hands, put it in your hair and just lift, like how I create volume in my hair. It also says just take your hands out and don't like, you know, you're going to disturb the curl pattern at that point. And if you do want more lift, then you can take some clips, you know, and apply the clips. In the book, there is an illustration on page 41. Step number six says it's best to let your hair air dry because your curls are fragile and heat can sometimes evaporate the gel. Personally, I air dry my hair. It's, it's just a preference for me. Um, I diffuse my hair once in a blue moon, but almost like 99.9% .9 of the time my hair air dries. It also says, but if you don't have time, then you can dry it with a diffuser, a hooded dryer, or you can also put the heater on in the car as well to help your hair dry. And that's it guys, because when I turn the page, it's chapter seven and it says relax, don't do it. So that kind of ends the styling process because this is chapter seven. So we just went through all of the steps. Personally, I don't really style my hair that way at all, but I am going to give it a go. I really, you know, am going to take this seriously because I'm doing this video because I'm very curious about this curly girl method. Um, again, no deep conditioning. Um, personally, I do use a sulfate free cleanser, so that's not a problem. I also don't condition my hair. I move straight on to deep conditioning. For me, I kind of feel like it's a money saver. Um, but when I was transitioning, I used to condition my hair and leave some of the conditioner in, so I don't do that. Then it moves on to, you know, styling. I don't apply my gel or any cream stylers in this particular way at all. I'm somebody who works in sections, coat, you know, every section to make sure that every curl is coated. I detangle differently as well, so this is very interesting. I am going to give it a go and I'll let you guys know how this process, you know, works out for me. I hope you enjoyed um, this video, guys. I know I'm doing a lot of reading, but I'm just kind of doing a bit of commentary and talking about it. Drop your comments down below. Again, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again in another video. Take care.